good morning dear students today in this series of lectures we are going to take a francis bacon and his essay of studies prescribed for ba first year let's discuss francis bacon francis bacon is a huge personality of the elizabethan period lord bacon he is known as the father of english essays he is known for his aphoristic and epigrammatic style of writing his writing style is pithy terse and brief जिसको हम हिंदी में कहते हैं वह गागर में सागर भरने वाली स्टाइल है उसकी एफोरेस्टिक एंड एपिग्रामेटिक ही राइट्स इन एपिग्राम्स ही राइट्स इन मैक्सिम्स हिज लाइफ हिज राइटिंग स्टाइल इज डिस्पर्स्ड मेडिटेशन हिज स्टाइल ऑफ राइटिंग इज कॉल्ड एज डिस्पर्स्ड मेडिटेशन मीन्स देर इज नो connection between the ideas no organization of ideas he takes some idea from this side then another from that side dispersed meditations francis bacon is the contemporary of william shakespeare he is also known as lord verulam he is He was an English philosopher and a statesman who served as Attorney General and Lord Chancellor of England. His works are credited with developing the scientific method and remained influential through the scientific revolution. Bacon has been called the father of empiricism. Dear students, empiricism is the philosophical term that we study in philosophy that simply means a theory that states that knowledge comes only or primarily from sensory experience in simple terms we can say empiricism means we get the knowledge through our experiences of senses sorry through our sensory experience or the experience that we receive that we get get through our senses that is known as empiricism if we talk historically empiricism was associated with the tabula rasa theory that is blank slate the concept of blank slate that human mind is blank at the birth and develops its thoughts only through experience so empiricism is closely associated with the concept of tabula rasa blank slate human mind is blank at the time of birth but it receives it develops through the sensory experiences with the passage of time francis bacon was a patron of libraries and developed a functional system for cataloging of books by dividing them into three categories history poetry and philosophy bacon has written 58 essays in total his first volume of essays was published in 1597 with 10 essays then second in 1612 with 38 essays and finally in 1625 posthumously with 58 essays the present essay of studies in this essay francis bacon discusses the practical aspects of studies simply means the merits and demerits of studies he talks about the uses of studies the defects of excess of studies 
and men with relation to studies, the correct view of studies, the classification of books, and what are the distilled books, studies with relation to man's perfection, the branches of knowledge, and there is utility, and how studies can remedy man's defects, means how the man's defects or deformities can be uh, reformed or uh, removed through studies. So, studies, what he says, Francis Bacon says that studies serve for all conditions of life. And books are the best friends of every human being. Whenever we feel alone, aloof, we must be in the company of books. We will feel delighted. Studies serve for all conditions of life. They serve in retirement and loneliness. They serve in business. They give us a wider outlook and a wider outlook may be helpful to us in every walk of life. Means reading of books enhances our global understanding, enhances our outlook towards life. In every walk of life, we are perfected through studies of books. The study of books affords to the mind a pure and intellectual joy and delight. Yes, what's, what he says that studies give us intellectual joy and delight. One who is well read in books can talk well. He can introduce quotations and illustrations in his discourse. It means if someone is well read, means well educated. One can talk well, one can argue well, one can discuss with quotations, with examples, with illustrations. And studies develop our natural gift. But further what he argues that, that knowledge taken from books or derived from books should be supplemented by one's experience. Yes, of course. Here, Francis Bacon is very practical in arguing that, that bookish knowledge is incomplete. Bookish knowledge must be supplemented or supported by our practical knowledge. Otherwise, we cannot be perfect in our life. Everything that is read should be examined carefully. Different books are to be read and studied in different ways. In the same way, there are different uses of reading, writing and speaking. Different subjects of study confer different benefits. History makes men wise, poetry, ingenious, mathematics, keen and penetrating, sciences, subtle and deep, moral philosophy, grave and serious, and rhetoric argumentative. Every kind of mental defect can be corrected by cause of special study. Absent-mindedness can be corrected by mathematics. So thus, studies are very important and useful for uh, life. Let's take up the essay. Studies serve for delight, for ornament, and for ability. What Francis Bacon says, study as an activity in whatever form brings us, brings us intellectual joy and enhances our thinking, speaking, and writing ability, adding charm to our personality. So, according to Francis Bacon, we human beings are savage, we are tribal, we are empty-minded at the time of birth. But with the passage of time and by the support of studies, we groom our personality, we, enha we enhance, we develop a full-fledged personality. All-round personality can be developed through studies of books, through the study of journals, study of various articles, essays, editorials magazines, biographies. 
the chief use for delight means studies chief use for delight is in privateness and retiring for ornament is in discourse and for ability is in the judgment and disposition of business study is always a private activity which people engage in when they are alone or in the privacy of their homes it helps them in relaxation after a strenuous routine after a, a very tough routine very exhaustive routine when the body and mind need to slow down it sharpens our intellect helping us to judge things soundly it helps us to go about our lives business in a more capable way yeah of course the studies help us studies make us capable studies make us sharp and sound make us brilliant make us intelligent we can do our business in a better way next what he says for expert men can execute execute and perhaps judge for of particular one by one but the general counsels and the plots and marshalling of affairs come best from those that are learned studies enable the learned men who have studied extensively to critically examine issues and arrive at the right conclusion they can garner data facts and arguments against a particular view rationally such intelligent analysis of facts improves the soundness and quality of their judgment next what he says to spend too much time in studies is sloth to use them too much for ornament is affectation to make judgment holy by the rules is the humor of a scholar it really dear students a very practical thing very very practical point over here made by francis bacon that if you study too much or over indulgence in studies leads to undesirable consequences that simply means if you study excessively or if you study too much it will lead you to boredom or sloth it will make you lazy Uh, you will lose your interest in studies setting aside long hours in a day to study will make a man indolent or lazy over use of the wisdom to analyze ordinary commonplace issues may make the man appear pretentious and vainglorious that simply means if you use your knowledge if you use your high knowledge into your simple matters of life that will appear to be ornamental or affectation so be practical always sticking too much to rules to assess situations and decide on action may invite derision from others that simply means don't judge the things only by rules simply because it will lead you to the situation of humor people will start laugh at laughing at you you will be the object of laughter a mockery next he says they perfect nature and are perfected by experience for natural abilities are like natural plants that need pruning by study and the studies themselves do give forth directions too much at large except they be bounded in by experience it simply means studying adds fineness and perfection to human nature experiences in life supplements such honing of nature a person's abilities inherited by birth are raw only when they are carefully worked upon and honed the inborn abilities yield the best benefits to us studying is the is the wet stone that we use to sharpen our abilities but inferences from study may lead to imprecise and misleading conclusions in such situations one's experience in life comes in handy to arrive at the right conclusion so experience is very valuable 
as it supplements studies. So studies and experience, both are complement to each other. Studies and experience. If you have both the things, you are perfect person. Suppose you are only studied, means you are only educated, but you don't have experience, then you are imperfect. Simply because experience is quintessential, is paramount for being a perfect person. Studies and experience should be supplemented by each other. Then only your abilities will become perfect and our natural abilities are like natural plants that need pruning, that need training, of course, education, studies. Next he says, crafty men condemn studies, simple men admire them and wise men use them, for they teach not their own use but that is a wisdom without them and above them, one by observation. Here, Bacon says that people who are cunning and deceitful have no appreciation for studies as they accomplish their objectives through many crooked ways. Simple folks or laymen, however, greatly value the role of studies in human life. But wise people inherently draw upon the ideas obtained from their studies while solving life's myriad problems, various problems. Here, Bacon says that those who are crooked and cunning, deceitful or crafty people, they depreciate the studies, they condemn studies, they criticize studies. Because they accomplish their objectives, they achieve their goals through crooked ways, nefarious ways. Simple men admire studies, they appreciate the studies and actually it's the wise people who use studies in their practical life. So. That's all for today and have a nice day. Tomorrow we will finish this chapter. Thank you very much. God bless you.